Um, I'd like to go on to new business. Uh, we have a public hearing for doing ology, special land use, 2399 West Main. Um, Andy, you want to start us off there? And uh, I'll open the public hearing right now so I don't forget it, which I tend to do. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mind. So yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so this is a, uh, the site is 2399 West Main Street. The application is for a, uh, a adult use marijuana establishment, a retailer uh, called the Joel G. And uh, so you should have in your packet the site plan, um, the overall layout. They also uh, supplied us with a lot of additional information that you plan out with the club corporation. Um, security information um, and uh, a lot of the other information that we're looking for uh, with regard to the site. So there are a few things that um, in terms of uh, completeness that, that we were uh, not provided that we were looking for. So most of this was relatively minor and dimensions of curb radii and adjacent zoning and uses. Most of those things we know already just because we're all very familiar with the site. Um, and uh, similarly, just some some minor uh, calculations and things like that generally um, that, that we didn't find to be significant or were missing from the application. So uh, we think that it, it is complete enough to review and for you guys to make a decision on tonight. So we'll kind of walk through some of the major um, uh, aspects of the site plan here. So um, generally speaking, the only uh, all the site plan standards are met. The only one that uh, we're, we're questioning is in um, section 13.04D requires that all parking areas be located a certain distance from the rear lot line, like 25 feet. Um, and so um, this one, what they're proposing to do is, is basically use all of the open area and parking on the site that's there now and to just continue to use that for um, for the new use, and so in the past, that's something that, that we have permitted when you have an existing um, building and, and, and an existing layout, and so it is coming in and, and proposing to make a bunch of improvements. Um, we generally have accommodated that, and I think that, that we can consider that legally non conforming in this case as well. And it, it helps uh, yeah, the applicant um, provide additional parking on the site, as, as we've seen from the first. Uh, applicant in, in the city that parking demand is, is still something that they're they're kind of working on and there's been quite a bit of traffic at that location. Um, uh, as far as landscaping, the applicant has proposed uh, 10 shrubs along the front property line, all which are evergreens, and two landscape areas kind of along the curb cut. Um, so the ordinance requires one tree and three shrubs for each 30 feet of lot width. And there are also some standards there for parking lot landscaping. Um, and so they're 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 a little, a little short primarily on, on kind of the type and, and and the number of shrubs, but in, in the past I think we did this with um, I think it was rare. I was, one of the ones across the street where they had that kind of roll of uh, evergreens along the front. That's something that you can approve in lieu of the other landscape. <coughs> so that would be something for the planning commission to discuss. Um, lighting appears to be fine, so they showed, uh, you know, fully cut off and shielded fixtures to minimize off-site glare and light trespass. Um, they did in indicate that uh, exterior lights at all points of entry and exit would be continually, uh, continually illuminated. Um, and the exterior lights in the parking area would, would also be on pretty much all the time, however, all the other interior and exterior lights would, would be on a timer. So again, it's, it's pretty common for some of these uses to have lights that are on. All night we do know and appreciate they are, are fully cut off fixtures, which are required by the ordinance, which should help um, you know, minimize a clear onto adjacent properties. Um, signage hasn't been specifically addressed as far as the size and location and things like that. So that's something that when they uh, come back in for a sign permit, as they move forward, we'll work with them to make sure that they have the right um, the right size and the right location and things like that. Um, well, obviously there are limitations in the zoning ordinances you know, governing height, uh, location, and size. Um, 
Um, they have obtained pre-qualification status from the state of Michigan for the adult use marijuana facility. And they have also completed a uh, kind of the first step of the local uh, operating license here with the city of Lowell. And they require both of these as pre prerequisites prior to um, prior to even accepting the site plan. Uh, do you want me to, to continue through the standards, or do you want to have the applicant go through the over anything? Yeah, let's, the, let's uh, have the uh, applicant, uh, if you would, please. Um, Whitney? Brian. Yeah, sorry. Board of Geology, 2399 West Main Street. What did you guys want to? Uh, Brian, if you want to give us a, just a, a, a brief description of what you want, what you want, what your vision is, and what you want to do. Um, where, where you're at. I'm a retailer, um, and um, I've been approved by the state of Michigan. We do have two locations open today. Um, probably got about uh, six to seven open by end of year. Um, so I've done retail my whole life in the wireless industry, so I kind of transitioned into the medical marijuana, not, well, medical and adult use marijuana. Um, my goal is to get uh, um, Todd as the owner of the building today. Um, once I get approval, I'll be buying from Todd and then working with him. Um, I think he wants to move his uh, business over to the other building on the property. And you guys mentioned parking, me and Todd came to an agreement on uh, parking easement. Not allowing me to just parking. I'm not sure if he sent it over to you guys yet, but we have that available for him. I have it right here. Well, don't tell me, I think it was in the conditions. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, so keep going. Yeah, um, well, yeah, my end goal is to uh, get an involved youth license with the city of Lowell and uh, hopefully get some business there. How, how long have you had your other two places open? Um, the other two have been open. Um, one of them in the Grand Rapids on 28th Street has been open um, a little over a month. And the yeah, second one is in Reading, Michigan, near the near like Ohio and Indiana border. I've been there for a month as well, and then tomorrow is my adult use approval there. So I'm in this and the one read today, but I'm hopefully tomorrow I'll be adult use there as well. And when would you expect to be open here? Will the provider everything that kind of works? Um, so usually um, the build outs take. Um, Assuming no COVID shutdown happens again, usually we haven't done within 90 days. Usually, so late fall is kind of weird. I mean, if everything gets go through, I want to try to open for the holidays if possible. Okay. Okay. Commissioners, any questions? Thank you, Brian. If you want to just have a seat here, if you're really close by, I guess, and we'll kind of go from there. Okay, Andy, you want to start the uh, site plan review? Yep. So. Uh, we do have the standards for site plan review, so we'll kind of walk through these one at a time. And Mr. Chairman, like we usually do, should we tell me to stop and make sure that the commission is on board with each one of these as we walk through? Yeah, I, I think so. So I'm starting on page four of our report, uh, a quarter, quarter of the way down on the site plan review standards, starting with item A, uh, which uh, discusses whether the use of tools will not adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare, and they'll be planning to take into account topography size of the property. Uses on adjoining property in relationship and size and buildings of the site. So, um, you know, previously the site was a uh, car, car dealership. This is a special land use in the industrial district, which will function more or less as a, as a retailer. It's in a commercial area. You know, most of the other land uses around it are either industrial or commercial in nature. Um, and so, since the development will be similar in terms of its overall size and, and, and the layout is generally similar to what we did previously. Um, we don't think that this would include the orderly normal development so or improvement of surrounding property. Um, this is a relatively flat piece of property. Um, um, there's uh, some storm water management is thrown on here, but we might need some more, some more detail on that. So uh, we do have a condition of approval that would indicate that the city will have to take a look at this and make sure that he's comfortable with the stormwater management. And you have that on the yep. and, and typically the city uses uh, the Kent County Grand Commissioner standards for, for stormwater. Um, so 
So there is um, one concern that, that, that we have, I'll, I guess I'll bring it up now. So with the way that the property is going to be divided, um, there's some parking on the uh, west side of, of, the, of the building, so people would pull it off of Main Street, then they kind of turn to the uh, east, and then they can either park in spaces that would have frontage on Main Street, or they can you know, head north, and then there's a series of parking spaces their vehicles would be facing to the west, but there's not, it doesn't look like there's really a, there's not like a landscape to divider between, I mean, I think it's a lot of open area, and it'll be striped, of course. Um, but I'm I'm wondering, just based on, on the site plan, it looks like it's gonna be tough if you're parking on one of those northerly two or three spots, and it'd be hard to back out and easily kind of work your way back down south through the site and get out easily. So it looks a little cramped, kind of, in my view there, so um, I think that's something for you guys to discuss. I mean, it's, 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 it'll be hard for them to, to deal with given the layout of the site unless they modify the boundary of the property a little bit, just in kind of looking at it. Um, because do, as we've seen, these generate quite a bit of traffic, at least initially. Now that might slow down after a few months and kind of normalize, especially now that there are multiple uh, options for this kind of product in the city. Um, but I am a little concerned that this, it's going to be a little tough just from, from sort of a traffic and vehicular circulation perspective. Does there a parking yeah. easement with the other property make any change to this or make it less egregious? Well, I don't know. So the, the easement would help in terms of the quantity. So they said, uh, I, I, I guess I, I don't know what it says, but Typically, when we've asked for these, it, 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 it would allow customers from this business to park on the adjacent property. And so it'll certainly help if there's more um, customers and more demand than there are spaces, and yes, that will help. Um, but it, it, it does help just in terms of, of, of the practical movements of, of cars. If you pull in and turn, then we can back out. It, it might be tough, especially if you're in a larger vehicle. Is there any selection to it, such as eliminating a spot or combining two spots? Yeah, I mean, uh, eliminating a couple of spots would probably help. Um, it, 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 at, a, at, a, at a minimum, if you get rid of the northerly most spot that butts right up against uh, the property line or the, uh, for the storage buildings to, to the north, that would at least give some the ability to kind of back out a little bit, and then they can get their tools oriented and, 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 and move themselves again. And depending on how many spaces they are going to be able to use from the neighbor, if that's a decent amount, then you know, losing one spot here is not going to be that big a deal. Commissioners, any questions on that? I mean, obviously, we can include that as a condition. So he's, he's sharing. Is he buying this lot and then building it, or is he leasing it? And it's going to well, he's he's so, so the property. So he owns the property that he's on now. So my understanding is that he'll have an agreement with the property owner to the west. So Joyology customers will be able to park there too. So basically he just has some overflow available. And that's just something we've asked all of the Yeah, we've required everyone else to do it so far because um, either overflow or in one case they provided a plan with some different parking. So there's another you know, 20 spaces that are not too busy then they would be required to construct additional parking. Right. So the entrance is shared then? Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah. And they will also need to get a driveway permit for from MDOT because this is a change of use for the property and the driveway. That becomes on the mm -hmm. too. Yep. Yep. That's it. That address it as well. Does that answer that concern, Mel? Um, I think yes. It, yeah. I mean, if they have, like I said, I haven't looked at the, the, the specific language of these, and so I can't, I can't comment intelligently on that. But um, yeah, getting rid of one or two of those early labels basically would certainly help. They have more than enough of parts. In terms of quantity, yes, um, they had enough as far as the ordinance provides. Um, just in terms of what we know and what we've seen so far is that we're asking or requiring more because we know that they're going to need it. What about the curb blocks? 
So that's something um, that you guys can just add on as a condition. So if you want to add some kind of, you know, wheel wheel stops or, or whatever, kind of along that, that western property line, so that everyone kind of stays on their own property, that would, that would be something that you could require. Um, alternatively, you could you could uh, require a you know a fence or some some kind of barrier there to kind of clearly demarcate the property line. I don't know if the fence would make sense necessarily if we're going to have. People parking over here, you want them to easily get over the building, but something like that um, would make sense to help kind of keep things organized. Any thoughts, Commissioner, on that? I'd like to say something. Do you find it better than just a group one? Yeah, it's in this area. It's just a really big parking lot. Right. Because you're just going to go in there and park wherever you want. It's not just yeah, I mean, they might need to add, add some signage too, and that might be something they can do for all these spots here is just have a sign in place that that's for, um, for, for allergy customers. And alternatively, the property owner to the uh, to the west, that's, they don't have to, of course, because this isn't their site plan, but it, it might not be a bad idea to kind of you know, to guide and direct where they want those folks to go, just so, just, just so it's clear, otherwise, um, like you said, you might have people parking where the owner doesn't want them parking, or where uh, there's going to be cars for sale or something. And that's obviously we want to minimize those kind of conflicts between property owners as, as, as much as we can, and let them kind of work out some of the final Because as if if the owner to the west sells, the easement still stay correct in force there forever. Andy, can I add something? Sure. Might clarify a little bit. Sure. Um, Please come on up and give us your name and address. Todd Landman from 2399 and 2401 West Main. The, the parking lot, um, it's a, currently it's a used car lot, so it's nothing but parking, but, um, which, you know, is the idea of a used car lot. The building size is approximately 2,000 square feet, so what do we need a parking spot for every 200 square feet? Um, I think in that zone. Yes. Yep. So we've probably, depending on how they strike the lot when it all comes down to it, I understand you might want some bunkers in front of doors or something, and that's pretty realistic. Um, I didn't put them in for the car lot because you might have a Suburban in the next to it. You might have a Chevy Chevette or something mm -hmm. like that. So you couldn't realistically do that. In this case, we can, you know, have a standardized parking size. Um, you know, whether they're angled or true north south, we haven't finalized, or he hasn't totally finalized that. We're flexible on that. But as far as um, the number of spots, I think we'll have double or triple what the ordinance really is asking for. In addition, we've come up with an agreement for uh, him leasing. Um, some land or some parking spots to the west on the 2401 property should the demand be there. If there was a grand opening or a special event or something, and it additionally, I do own the storage facilities, so for a temporary basis, you know, on big event days, there's dozens of spots where certainly his employees could park in the self-storage area itself, free so that employees aren't taking up you know, valuable parking spots. So I, I don't really physically see a way, no matter how big of an event you had, that I would encroach on my neighbors, north, south, east, or west. That was, you know, I talked with Dean Lonick about this and, and uh, my neighbor to the west, and um, we just don't see anything overflowing that way. Okay, thank you. you bet. Commissioners, any, any other thoughts? Let's leave it then, just let's think about it a little bit here. Um, and we can, we can move on. And if, if, uh, Andy, if you continue, as we get towards conditions here and things of that nature, um, whether or not we have 
bumpers or you know what is what's what's the most appropriate kind of that point. Mm -hmm. I think part of it part of it has to do quite honestly with you may own it now, but you may sell it. What's the new owner gonna you know, they have rights too. So we have to protect those obviously and yet we want to try to make it as convenient as possible for the people coming in and the owners and you know all of those so i the object here is is not to be punitive by any stretch of the imagination what we're trying to do is to ensure going forward that everybody is protected in the best way possible so i i, I would like to leave that kind of up to our zoning uh, administrator Andy here and uh, let them kind of work that out and, and as, as we go. Does that make sense, Commissioners? Mm -hmm. um, is there more to this? No. So not on that one, no. And this this discussion kind of spills into item B here a little bit where we talk about vehicular pedestrian circulation being provided. Um, so we'll kind of jump into that now. So we talk about and then we'll take a vote on both. Sure. Yep. So um, they, they have 17th space on 17 spaces on the site and they're required to have about 10. Um, so they do have more than what's required. Um, we do know on here that it looks like the ADA space is, is a little on, on the narrow side. Um, so they might need to increase the width of those. And those ADA spaces you can see are on the, uh, on the east side of the property, on the east side of the building. Right up front there. So I don't know if there's going to be room to fit two of them in there, so they might have to have one help, you know, one of the developers, but they will have to be as close to the front door as is reasonably practical. Um, so and then as a note here in item B, we've already did, talked about this, is that, you know, we talk, we include you know, employee parking and how many customers are likely the first, you know, few weeks or months that it's open. We're concerned about our shortage. It sounds like they've already taken some some good proactive steps to to address that, which we appreciate. So we will um, be keeping that and I am moving forward. So I guess if you guys say yeah, I want to go out and be together, then we can move on and see if we find it. Yeah. Um, commissioners on on A and B, obviously there are um, some some issues with the way the parking is laid out, as much as anything. And I would make the recommendation <clears throat> that we accept standards A and B with the condition that our zoning administrator uh, use the, the proper discretion to resolve those issues. Uh, because I think it's it's going to come down to what what protects both properties. Any other thoughts on it? In that case, all in favor of accepting the uh, standards A and B, do we say aye? Or do we need a... You don't need, this is kind of informal. So at the end, you'll take a formal vote, but when we go through these games in the past, there's just kind of a general consensus. Okay. All in favor, then, of accepting the site plan review standards A and B, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Those standards are accepted, then. Uh, item C. Discusses the arrangement of public and private vehicular and pedestrian connections to existing one planned streets in the area to provide a safe and efficient circulation traffic system within the city. Um, so this property uses an existing curb cut onto uh, Main Street. Um, so this is a shared driveway right now. Um, so again, there's already a shared uh, access agreement in place here. Um, that would be good to have a copy of that on file also because this is a change of use for the property and that will likely require a new uh, driveway permit. So we do require that as a condition of approval. Um, but assuming that those two things are adequately addressed, then I think that standard would be met. Uh, commissioners, any questions? And again, all in favor then of accepting the uh, site plan standards uh, D or C, excuse me, C. Uh, site plan review standards, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Standard is accepted. And D discusses the removal or alteration of significant natural features. Um, this is an easy one because there really aren't any natural features on the site. It's totally impervious almost. Um, so uh, we had some comments on the general landscaping requirements as far as the number of shrubs and stuff they've proposed series of uh, evergreens kind of along Main Street, similar to what uh, we're across the street 
uh, somebody saw them last month or two months ago. So uh, we do have a general condition of approval that requires ongoing maintenance of those improvements. Uh, again, commissioners, uh, the site plan uh, review standard D. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Position B is accepted. Uh, and E, satisfactory assurance shall be provided that the requirements of all other applicable ordinances, codes, and requirements shall be met, which is always addressed as a can issue. Let's go to F. F is uh, required that the general purposes, purposes and spirit of this ordinance and the master plan of the city of Lowell shall be maintained. Um, so the, the applicant provided a fairly lengthy written narrative and business plan that, that talks about the intent to hire local, um, use, use local contractors. Um, and in terms of the master plan, um, this property is in the highway business usual land use category, which is kind of what most of West Main Street is out there. Um, generally speaking, it's intended to accommodate uses that are sort of auto-oriented commercial, auto-oriented retail service uses, things like that. So this is what, 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 what we would consider to be a, another retail establishment. And so therefore, we think it is consistent with the city's master plan. Commissioners, again, the uh, site plan uh, review standards, E and F. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor of accepting the standard, please, or standards, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. E and F then are accepted. I'd like to take just a brief moment here. This is a uh, public hearing. Is there anybody in the general public that would like to make a comment at this point? And I will try to ask that same question here after we uh, go through the special land use uh, standards. So as we go through a section, We'll try to go through it as commissioner up here, and then I'll try to ask for uh, uh, questions. If there is somebody that has an immediate question concerning one of these, please raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. So now we're going to get into the special land use review standards, section 17.03. So these apply only to special land uses in, in the city, um, whereas the previous uh, set of standards uh, apply to basically anything that's in uh, the commercial district that requires the, uh, a site plan. So at 17.03, we have uh, general standards which are similar to um, in terms of how they're written to what we just went through. So the first standard here, and Mr. Chairman, I assume you just want to go through these just like we did yes. before. Okay. So the first one uh, says that the use shall be designed, constructed, operated, and maintained so as to be harmonious and appropriate in appearance with the existing or intended character and general vicinity and it will not change the essential character of the area in which it is proposed. Uh, so again, it's occupying an existing building, and primarily there's just in, going to be in, internal structural modification to, to the site. So the building size, the proximity to other, other properties, and some of the spatial impacts that go along with that are not going to be changed from what's there presently. Um, they have uh, submitted building, el el building elevations of design and materials and they're, they're describing a visual marketing plan. Um, so again, the, the exterior appearance looks, looks fine, looks good, um, and I think it would be uh, visually an overall improvement in that area of the city. So we found that, or we recommended, that uh, standard A would be met. Uh, and do you want to do B at the same time? Yeah, so B is, is that another standard requiring compatibility with the city master plan, which we discussed, and so we felt like that it was consistent with the master plan as well. Commissioners, um, special land use uh, standards, review standards, excuse me, um, A and B, any questions? Hearing none, all in favor of accepting those standards, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. A and B of the special land use uh, standards, review standards, are accepted. Item C states that the proposed special land, use, special land use shall be served adequately by essential public facilities and services such as highway streets, police, fire, drainage, refuse disposal, water, and sewage facilities. Um, 
So this is an existing building and additional utility requirements are not anticipated beyond what's normal and necessary for a retail operation. Um, I didn't see on the site plan um, if it had located the existing um, water and sewer connection. And uh, the, so that's something that, that, that you can ask for there to make sure that we, that we know where, where those are, but there's not any, anything in the uh, submittal that would indicate that that's going to change or any change that would be warranted. Uh, the applicant also provided an emergency response and fire safety plan which details efforts to promote safety within the, in the site. Uh, and that, generally speaking, discusses fire alarm sprinklers, fire extinguishers, monitoring services, and an evacuation plan. Uh, we're not experts on that kind of thing, so if the, so, as part of our um, process here, once site plans and special languages are approved, these get circulated around to the other departments within the city. So that would certainly happening in here. Um, so we don't anticipate any any concerns in that regard, and we will, um, or with regard to stormwater management for that matter, but we will um, make sure that the city engineers uh, find their. The plans to be acceptable, but you know, generally speaking, when there's not an increase in the amount of impervious surface on site, we have run into problems in the past. Uh, commissioners, uh, the special land use uh, review standard C. Any questions on it? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Review standard C is accepted then. Item D, the proposed special land use shall not create additional excessive requirements at public costs for public facilities and services. Um, we don't anticipate that's going to be an in, in issue here, so um, this does not consist of any of the any of those potential facilities that might impact that. Um, utility connections would be established by the previous user, and um, in the applicant's narrative, package, they uh, have indicated that they actively participate in recycling practices, and saw energy efficient fixtures, um, reduce water consumption, things like that. So um, it appears from the app, from the materials submitted that uh, they are um, you know, doing what they can to minimize the impact on public uh, facilities and services. Andy, you want to go ahead with E and F at the same time? Here, yep. Please? So, <coughs> He yeah. states that the proposed use should not involve uses, activities, processes, materials, equipment, or conditions that would be detrimental to any person, property, or the general welfare. The reason of excessive production of traffic noise, smoke, fumes, glare, or odors. Um, uh, we don't feel like those things are generally going to be a concern. Um, they state that the consumption of marijuana is not prohib is, is prohibited on the site. Um, so as far as odors are concerned, they'll have an HVAC system that it will be designed to, to produce odors. And um, the, the product is going to be you know, locked in a vault or in closed cabinets at all times, which will further reduce, um, you know, reduce the potential for odors to escape the site. So you know, the one thing that we know here is that traffic is, is likely to in, in, increase here on the site. So we will have to well, the applicant will have to carefully monitor and kind of manage all that if necessary. And you know, we've talked about this already, but you know, it's something that they'll have to keep an eye on to make sure that there aren't any issues with, with, with pedestrians, with people getting in and out, cars aren't backing up on the main street, things like that. Um, and the last standard F states that it shall require it shall comply with all applicable federal, state, and local requirements and copies of all applicable permits shall be submitted to the city. Which is addressed as a condition of approval. Thank you. Um, commissioners, the uh, special land use review standards D, E, and F. Are there any questions, concerns? Hearing none, all in favor of accepting, please say aye. 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 Uh, and opposed, same sign. The standards, uh, the special land use review standards D, E, and F are then accepted. General public, again, any questions? Okay. Andy, go on. Okay, so the last set of standards that we're going to walk through are specific standards for adult use marijuana establishments. So the first couple sets of six that we walked through were 
general standards for all special land uses. So if it's a you know, property or, or a drive-through, we always apply the standard, generalized standard. Uh, the, the standards that we're going to get into now are specific only for adult use marijuana establishment. So uh, we kind of skip around here a little bit in terms of how the lettering goes because not all of the language in that in that paragraph works as far as you know being a standard. So this item B for separation distances, and I know that you are all um, are familiar with this, but um, for those who aren't, the establishment must be. Uh, at least it's got to be a thousand feet or farther from a preschool or child care center, whether or not it is within the city of Lowell. Also a thousand feet from a public or private K-12 school and 500 feet from the C2 Central Business District. And it does satisfy all of those standards. Um, odors we've talked about a little bit already here. So this section C with subsections uh, 1 through 5 is the language of the ordinance. So they talk about odor mitigation in the business plan stating that there will never be odor generated from our facility and the use uh, of marijuana that can be detected. Uh, you know, there will be no consumption of, of, of marijuana that it would be, uh, you know, it's not allowed on, on premises anyways. Um, and so they have proposed to maintain um, all marijuana in locked vaults or in closed cabinets at all times, except occasionally they said they might you know, take some out to let um, someone you know, view or smell a sample. Um, they also have uh, an HVAC system will be designed to reduce uh, re reduce odors by just recycling the air, although they didn't get into a lot of de detail about how they're going to do that specifically, if there will be carbon filtration or something like that. So um, that, that could be an, um, a question for the applicant. Same thing with negative air pressure. They didn't get into much detail on that in the application plan. Let's take that time right now. Okay. Go ahead. Mr. Tolman, could you address those, please? Um, well, it's an yeah, yeah, but I, I, um, as far as the specifics on the order plan, um, um, my, I don't have the specifics myself on the order plan, um, but I will get it over to you guys to be honest. Um, I don't put that plan together, but we've uh, been approved in uh, 17 other municipalities. Um, so I, um, I'll make sure that it's not a um, detail that we will get a detailed one for you guys. Yeah, so um, the ordinance requires like a carbon filtration system or something to well, actively do that and um, maintain negative air pressure inside the building. Um, so if that, if you have documentation that, that supports that, then you can send it over to that Thank you. Um, item D is the standard that says the establishment shall be operated and maintained so that any byproducts or waste shall be properly and lawfully kept and disposed of so as to preclude any risk of harm to the public health, health, health safety, or welfare, excuse me. Um, so they submitted a waste, dis a waste disposal plan, and it states that they, you know, dispose of marijuana in accordance with state and local laws. And they further stated that uh, marijuana product waste must be rendered unusable and unrecognizable through grinding and incorporating it into waste with uh, non-consumable solid waste. The mixture of at least 60% of that must be non-marijuana, uh, which is a state requirement. Um, they also uh, propose to um, report waste destruction through uh, some software and waste disposal log. And so uh, this was uh, you know, more detailed. There was not anything on the site plan that it, indicated like where a dumpster would be. I don't know if that's going to be necessary for the site. So again, that's I guess a question for the applicant um, in terms of if there will be a dumpster or so where. Mr. Cole, again, uh, we'll be planning to put a dumpster um, on the premises. Um, so we just submitted our preliminary site plans as we when I um, resubmit full construction drawings and then along with uh, you know your guidance as well because I want to make sure that it would put on there as well you guys are going to accept. So I plan on detailing all that in the construction drawings once the approval um, once we go through go the next step. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, and he prohibits the establishment from being operated out of any residence or building that would be used wholly or partially for residential purposes. That is not proposed here. Uh, item F um, uh, addresses the, you know, if there's going to be any 
portion of the structure where energy usage and heat would exceed typical residential use, um, such as the grill room or storage of chemicals and things like that. It also requires that fuels, fertilizers, pesticides, etc., um, be stored and secured in the locked area. Um, they do provide some pest control uh, narrative in here, but obviously they're not planning on growing. So, in terms of like pesticides and uh, you know, herbicides and, and, and heat lamps and stuff like that, that's not going to be an issue on this site. Um, item G prohibits an establishment from also selling alcohol or tobacco, which is not proposed here. H prohibits drive through, which is not proposed. Uh, I re requires ongoing compliance with the uh, MTRMA, um, which is addressed obviously as a condition of approval. J is landscaping, so it enables the planning commission to require additional landscaping above and beyond what is in the norm. So as part of your, your deliberations should be, you should think about if you want additional landscaping on the property or what you think they're acceptable as on to. Um, item K, if the owner or licensee shall make clear and adequate records, documentation, demonstrating that all cannabis and cannabis products have been obtained from or provided to other permitted and licensed operation. So they have submitted a uh, inventory record keeping plan um, that uh, proposed, you know, they kind of tell us about the software that provides patient management for the sales and Control, et cetera, and it's, it's something that's specifically designed for the industry. They also have procedures uh, in here for identifying dis dis uh, inventory dis discrepancies, daily audits of all products each morning, and reconciliation of the point of sale system. So um, we wrote in here that you may include the right to examine, monitor, or audit such record and documentation as a condition of approval, and that's something that. Don't we put that in standard, mm -hmm. Yeah. Item L uh, re requires all necessary building, electrical, plumbing, and mechanical permits uh, shall be uh, maintained, especially uh, for anything that contains electrical wiring, lighting, water, devices, etc. So there's not growing or harvesting on the site again, so those don't, don't generally apply. Then M is kind of a catch all provision that says in the event of a conflict, this ordinance would be preempted by the, uh, M the uh, MRTMA, the State Act. So that means if there's something in the in, in, in the state act that uh, is found to conflict with, with our rules, then the state's rules would control. So um, we did recommend approval of the site plan and special land use. We have a list of 23 conditions on here. Um, most of these are, are, are very similar to all of the conditions that we put on all of our other applications. Um, so I'm just going to Andy, can we can we take a break here and go through the adult use marijuana established uh, special land use standards? B through L. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there's any questions on any of them. Any thoughts? I guess the only one I have is on J, requiring additional landscaping buffers of screen. Obviously, uh, it is a um, the equipment rental, storage space. Uh, most of it is payment building. Anything that can be done, uh, I guess, to add a little greenery around to make it more human looking uh, would be greatly appreciated. I don't know that we necessarily have to put it in as a condition, but I think a, uh, just a recommendation, I guess, from our standpoint, uh, we've done this uh, with almost every special land use that we've had that I've been here for five years. Um, we just, we try to keep the the entire city is green and as clean as we possibly can and it's invited. So that would be our general recommendation. Beyond that, is there any other comments on uh, what did I say? Adult use marijuana uh, establishment, special land use standards, B through M. Hearing no discussion, all in favor of accepting those standards, please say aye. 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 Both at the same time, the standards are accepted. Okay. General public, any thoughts? Seeing none, Andy, we want to go on to your recommendations. Yep. So the recommendation is to approve the application. Um, we have 23 standards on here. I think we have 
list all the comments in here, so just to highlight a couple of these for the planning commission. Um, the maintenance of landscape materials is condition 12. The driveway permit is condition 13. The cross access easement is condition 14. Uh, the trash enclosure being shown on the site plan is condition 15. Um, the shared access agreement for the driveway would be condition 18. Uh, so I think we got everything. Uh, item 20 is the, uh, the, the, the order control specifics. Um, so I think I think I've, I got everything here that you have required. Um, if you want to, Mr. Chairman, add something about additional landscape or greenery, we can you know, we can add something here. Um, uh, the parking issues. Yeah. So I guess that's for the commission to decide. I mean, do you want them to eliminate that northerly spot or just? come up with something. Well, I think two things. We have to eliminate that normal spot and we also have to uh, realign or get a new look at the uh, two spots that they're properly done. Um, and then finally, the delineation between the property to the left, uh, to the west and back. Could be those uh, three issues. And I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm fine with leaving it with our <coughs> own administrator. Uh, I almost would like to see more landscaping to define the two properties to separate them. I don't know that that's really possible with the layout that it is. It's all it's right. Different. I mean, it's, it, it, it would appear as though signage of some sort it would be required there, or the curbs, you know, whatever, whatever can be done. But I think it, it has to be done. It has to be proposed by the applicant and Andy working together to do that. In my opinion. <coughs> So if we can add that, those three things, the northern property, northern lot being eliminated, the ADA with a new wall, I guess, and then the delineation between the property out to the west. And then some sort of delineation to the best use of the land and the property. Gives you some room there and gives Andy some room here to operate. Um, seems to be some uh, having said that, then, with all of that, I will make the uh, motion that we uh, accept the, uh, the site plan and special land use for geology. With the 23, 24 conditions, 26, 26 conditions. The, 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 so, I, so there's 23 listed, but I added, you know, 24 would be eliminating the Northern Lake parking space, 25 ADA compatible parking, 26 would be the delineation between the permits. Uh, so this would be the application or the site plan review special managers for uh, zoology, and I would recommend uh, that we accept that. For a second with those conditions. I'll second. And is there further discussion? All in favor of accepting it, please say aye. 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 Or no, we need a roll call vote. Sorry. <coughs> roll call vote. Mr. Chairman, while 